So then ROM, right, is range of motion. What's this one? Active range of motion, passive range of motion, active resistant range of motion, and manual muscle test. So then you're looking for the actual how far they can move, and then also if there's any pain associated with it. And then what you can do is at the end of those ranges, you can put a little bit extra pressure to see. Because we were talking about before is that when you have symptoms at the end of the range, that can indicate the nerve tissues can be strained. And then if you do active range of motion or resistant range of motion, that's going to be more like they indicate contractile tissues. So you also want to know what part of the movement do they feel the pain. So if you ask the patient to flex the head forward, they bring your chin to your chest, and then want to know, okay, is there any change in the pain? If somebody comes in and their neck's hurting, and you ask them, you know, does that cause you any pain when you bend your head forward? Well, my neck already hurt. So you want to know, did that cause a change in the symptoms? Did that increase the pain? Because if they're already in pain and they bend their head forward and it still hurts, you know, that may not necessarily mean that that range of motion is increasing the pain. And then you want to know, sometimes, and we'll talk more about it, like for example on the shoulder, you may have a point where they raise their arm, they feel the pain, and then they go past it. So there may be only pain in a certain range of that arc. And then when we talk about lumbar, if they bend forward like this, they don't feel any pain, but when they start to come back up, they feel it. That's going to be more likely to indicate maybe it's just a muscle problem. So overall, what you want to do is you don't just look how far they move, you look for any obvious signs of pain, any changes in the motion, things like that. And then the way that things are measured is either going to be with a goniometer or an inclinometer, and a lot of times it's going to be an estimation. But for purposes of this class, you either have to, we'll go over both of them, goniometer and inclinometers, and you just need to be familiarized with one of them. Uh, you're not going to be able to do just visual estimation in this class. You need to know one type of method to measure range of motion. And now as far as the actual normal values, okay, this is based out of the textbook. Okay? You'll see different sources will have and have different ranges of motion as normal. Right. With something like this, it's probably going to be more based on a goniometer measurement. Because like I said before, when you're using the inclinometer, you're going to isolate, you're going to subtract out any motion that occurs below the cervical spine. Like if I bend my head forward like this, I'm using some of the motion out of the cervical spine. So if I just measure how far my neck went and I don't subtract out the thoracic spine, then you're going to get something like 80 or 90. Whereas if you use inclinometers and you're, and you're isolating just the movement of the neck, then you might get a lower number as normal. And then also range of motion is going to be relative. You know, you're not going to suspect, expect the same normal for somebody that's 80 or 90 years old versus a 14-year-old female gymnast. Right? All right, so here's the actual details on the range of motion for the goniometers. Now, when you're talking about a goniometer, this is going to be the fulcrum right here. Okay? That's the center point of the movement. And then you're usually going to have a fixed arm and then a mobile arm. So the fixed arm is something that you're going to put fixed in space, and then the mobile arm is going to move. All right. So in this case, we're talking about the fixed arm. Or the fulcrum is going to be an external arterial meatus, and then the fixed arm is either going to be perpendicular or parallel to the to the floor. So let's say if we have the fixed arm like this. Okay. Then the mobile arm. There's two different ways you can do it. Is if you go with the external arterial meatus and then you go to the base of the nose here. Okay, so that's your, your uh, mobile arm. And then you bend forward like that. You don't necessarily need to 
sit there and follow it all the way. What you can do is when the person moves to the end of the range, then you can position it to measure how far they move. Okay? And then an alternative way is that if you're wearing glasses, you know, imagine where the, the line of your glasses are, which is usually to the, from the tip of the, this part of the ear here to the corner of the eye. So that's another place where you can do the fixed arm. And so with a, with a larger gonometer like this, you may not want to, it'll get in the way of the shoulder, so you may want to do it like this, or you can do it here. Okay? So like it says, as long as the fixed arm is either perpendicular to the, to the ground or parallel. And then extension is in the same position, you're just going back the other way. So flexion is forward like this, extension is back like that. And then lateral flexion, you're going to be doing, imagine if I was turned around here, and this is the, I'm at the, the fulcrum's at the spinous process of C7. And then the fixed arm is going to be in line with the spinous process of the thoracic spine, and then the uh, mobile arm is at the midline of the head using the external occipital protuberance. Okay? So then you're going to measure it basically like this. The lateral flexion. Okay? Rotation is a little tricky. Okay? So what you're going to do is the fulcrum is going to be on the basically the vertex of the head and then you're going to use some type of reference. Okay, so you can use this fixed arm is going to stay pointed straight ahead, and then the mobile arm is going to be aligned with the tip of the nose. So I want you to turn your head to one side. And then the best way to do this is that you're going to be in a position here where you're looking down over the patient. Okay? You could also use the fixed arm as a line drawn between the tips of the shoulders, and so you orientate the body like that, and then turn, turn to one side, and then back the other. Okay. It's mostly like for turning. Yeah. I mean, is that? Yeah. That's the thing that you're going to do is, like I said before, a lot of times you're doing documentation, and you need to show progress, or if you're going to show it to the patient, they say, here's where it was to start with, here's where it is now. So you're using documentation to uh, justify the need for care. The other thing, like a lot of times, if you send in reports to managed care companies and you say, okay, these are the exam findings, the person has increased range of motion, you know, flexion was this, extension was that. So then the goal of treatment, as we talked before about in your plan, you're going to write down the goals. So one of the goals is to be to increase range of motion. And then when you do a re-exam, then you do it again and you repeat and you can say, well, look, I can document that the patient's improving with treatment. But they're not quite to normal yet, so they need more treatment. So how many people have uh, goniometers? Okay. And then I see how, you have one inclometer or two? I've got two. Okay. Anybody else have inclometers? Okay. So I'm going to pull up the. Uh, I think, and two inclinometers is about 20 bucks. Um, the goniometers tend to be a little easier on certain like extremity joints, whereas inclinometers tend to be a little better or easier to use with spine. But if you, if you look at studies and research, the, the inclinometers are more reproducible and more accurate. Like if I have one person use, if we have two different people measure on the same patient, Goniometers, there's going to be more of a discrepancy between the two different examiners versus if you have inclinometers, they're going to be more likely to be in agreement. Okay. So overall, an inclinometer is the more is the more accurate thing to use. Okay. 